Can you elaborate on celibacy in thought, word, and action in a marriage? We do have some people on this path that are married and they are celibates. Okay? Very few. <laughs> but it can be done. It's a little more difficult when both people are not on the path and one is wanting to engage in the physical drama. Okay. But if you are not going to be celibate <clears throat> and that your situation at the moment precludes that, you have not made that, um, that dedicated effort, you're not ready for that much of the dedicated effort to go fully into celibacy, then one should remain chaste within their marriage, honor their marriage vows, okay, goes without saying. To be honest in your actions with your partner, to honor them, if you are in a sexual relationship with them, then honor your partner. Okay. Be surrendered to that. Surrender to your partner. Make it a sacred moment. Not just for your physical yayas, okay? That's not what it's about. Okay. There are many paths, bhakti paths, where yes, they have sexual relationship, but it's there for procreation of children. And if they're not actively having children, they are also supposed to be celibate. Okay. So this is not the only type of path where celibacy is uh, stressed. But of course, everyone has their own proclivities and you know, we can't mandate that people absolutely have to be celibate unless they're going to be sannyasis for sure, then they have to be, then that's a 100% commitment on that. But if you're married and you're in a relationship, especially young marriages, then yeah, then we have to look at it in a little different light and we have to make some allowances for that. But hopefully people um, come to this path before they get involved in a relationship, not come to this path and then decide, oh, I think I'm going to get married. Because when you get married and you have children, you have an 18-year commitment to that that has to be fulfilled. So we don't want you to come in and have children and then leave your partner high and dry to raise the children by themselves while you go traipsing off saying, I'm going to follow my spiritual path. No, you have a commitment to help to raise those children. Okay. So there's a lot involved in it. There's a lot involved in, in um, celibacy, marriage, etc. Yeah, you know, with the relationship thing, it comes up so much, and um, it's such a fine, tricky balance within it if one is seeking and the other isn't. And that is why we've um, come to make changes within the ashram that actually allow for that and allow for um, ones that are within the relationship to continue to go forward that are seekers. And then the questions come, well, what about celibacy? And that is, um, it seems to only work well, again, if both are in harmony with that, which isn't always the case. More than, more, you, the usual is that it's not the case. And so that makes it very challenging. But if that's something you want to begin to move towards, then um, just um, allow the practices to deepen and allow honesty to come forward, whatever that means, and open up to the situation, the commitment, without pushing it away or 
trying to make it different or saying, well, maybe if I wasn't in one, this could happen and all those things. It's really about then just accepting it 100% living within whatever those commitments are and continuing to go forward as best possible. But these commitments are lifetime commitments. You know, sometimes they fall away in relationships. It just happens naturally um, because what is not beneficial it comes up many times and it, it is sloughed off, it happens. And so be open to whatever that means, but that doesn't mean trying to make that happen. It means really staying with the responsibilities and working within what's there um, with the practices as given. So, Yeah, one has to be honest with their partner, okay? And as one does a, a path, then their dynamic and some of their um, identification th and things are going to change. Their parameters are going to change. The things that they're interested in are going to change. And so sometimes what happens is the partners grow apart. And hopefully, it, if the partners are going to grow apart, hopefully this takes place before they have children. rather than having children in the mix and then having this divisive um, divisive happening. So just use your best judgment on that. Okay. And once again, don't don't use marriage as a thing just to say, well, I've got to have sex because my partner wants it, and really you're just there to get your jollies, okay? So don't don't put that on your partner. <laughs> Be honest with what's what's happening and what's going on.